In this video, I'm going to talk about quadrants in trigonometry. So to start off, we have our xy coordinate plane. And the quadrants are simply going to tell us where we are relative to these two axes. So in the top right, we have quadrant 1. Top left is quadrant 2. Bottom left is quadrant 3. And bottom right is quadrant 4. You'll notice that they're numbered in ascending order, starting at the x-axis and then moving counterclockwise around. The quadrants are cool because they tell us what the signage is of x and y. So in quadrant 1, we have a positive x and a positive y. Quadrant 2, we have a negative x and a positive y. Quadrant 3 is a negative x and a negative y. And quadrant 4 is a positive x and a negative y. The reason this is important is that if we draw a unit circle on this coordinate plane and then extend a line from the center, the point where that line meets the circle, that x, y coordinate, is equal to cosine theta comma sine theta. So put a different way, x is equal to cosine theta, and y is equal to sine of theta. And we just went around the circle and figured out what x and y is going to be in each quadrant. So what we really did was figure out what the sine of cosine and sine is going to be. Um, for instance, if we drew a line from the center into quadrant 3, then this value here is going to have some negative x, negative y value. But we can figure out what the sine of all trig functions are. So here, sine is negative because we have a negative y. Cosine is negative because we have a negative x. Tangent is positive because that's sine over cosine, and we have a negative over a negative, so positive. Cotan is 1 over tangent, so this is going to remain positive. Cosecant is 1 over sine, so that's 1 over some negative value, so this is going to be negative. And then we have secant, which is 1 over cosine, which is again 1 over some negative value, so this is going to be negative. And so just by knowing what quadrant we're in, we're able to infer what all of the sine values are of the trig functions. Now what I want to do is, actually let's do this, is clean this up. And then we're going to write in the sine values of each trig function in each quadrant. So in quadrant one, everything is positive. So sine, cosine, tangent, cotan, cosecant, and secant. So not super interesting to look at, but when we go over quadrant two, things are going to change. Sine is going to be positive, but then we have a negative cosine, negative tangent, and negative cotangent, Oops. a positive cosecant, and a negative secant. In quadrant three, we have a negative sine, a negative cosine, a positive tangent, positive cotangent, negative cosecant, and a negative secant. And then in quadrant 4, we have a negative sine, positive cosine, negative tangent, negative cotangent, negative cosecant, and a positive secant. The pattern that you'll notice here is that um, each trig function and its reciprocal will have the same signage. So, for example, sine and cosecant, if we find them in each quadrant, they're always going to have the same uh, sine value, so positive or negative. The same thing goes for uh, cosine and secant. We can do this real fast. Cosine, secant. They're always positive or negative together. And also, same thing for um, tangent and cotangent. The last thing to talk about is that these quadrants um, will sometimes be given to you in a problem. So, for instance, you'll be told that the 
angle is in quadrant two and it has a sine value of four over five. So you're gonna be over here in quadrant two, sine is gonna be some value, say, say it was four over five. So it would be four over five and you'd have to figure out what this value is. Similar, similarly, you could be told you're in quadrant four or you're in quadrant three or you're in quadrant one. Um, the process is the same. You're going to figure out what that angle is based on the cosine or sine value that they give you. And then you're going to draw some triangle and figure out what the missing sides are.